Hi everyone! Today we're going to make the Daytona backpack from Pink Pony Designs. Um, I'm going to make it a super simplified version. You can see in the background here it's got accents on the top and the bottom and um, like a keychain holder thingy. I don't know what that is. And then it's got a divided pocket. I'm not doing any of that. I'm leaving it super simple. It's an open bag. Um, and I did it all in one color, which is why I left it super simple. So this is what we're going to make. I added some purse feet and a name tag and riveted it shut. We did the rolled handles. Um, once you get inside, you'll see that there is no... Um, binding on the slip pockets that I did. It's kept it real nice and simple. It's a beautiful finished bag. Um, I used this very, very, very beautiful purple metallic from Emmeline Bags. Uh, if you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. I'm going to use just this solid uh, purple Rex faux leather, I think it is, um, from Emmeline Designs. No, Emmeline Patterns. I don't. Anyways, I actually already started it and then remembered I wanted to take a video. I only have done the zipper, um, the zipper holder so far and basted it on. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you what I've done so far and do another one. Um, and then I'll base the other side on because I have one side basted on, the other side's not. It's just clipped on. So I'm going to take my zipper holder pattern piece or, or uh, cutout piece. I made it one piece right now instead of the two. Um, so just ignore that. We're cutting it down anyways, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I'm going to take some quarter inch double sided tape. I get it from waywack.com and I'm going to put it along the short edge of the vinyl. There we go. On the wrong side, the double sided tape goes. I use quarter inch for everything. I don't have a bigger size. Just works out nicely like this. Okay, I've got two pieces, one on each side, and I have a one inch mark drawn. The one inch mark you don't have to do, I just did it to make it easier for the video. So then I'm going to take my double sided tape side and fold it to the line I made. So that's going to fold it over a half inch. And just press it down. I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So now your piece looks like this on the wrong side and this is the right side. So I'm going to bring you over here real quick. Sorry. We're going to go ahead and cut our piece into fours. So they're one and a half inch wide. Okay, we've got four strips now, one and a half inch wide each. Now we get to come do some sewing. Okay. 
I've got a 15 inch zipper tape. I'm just going to um, open it up a little bit. I'm not going to put a zipper on right now. I'm going to fold my zipper tape. It's upside down right now. Back at like a 90 degree angle. And we're going to baste it on. We're only going to do the beginning at the 90 degree angle because the end has a zipper stop thing. <laughs> what are those called? Um, like just a tab at the end so the zipper doesn't come undone or a zipper end. So I'm basting this on. I'm using a number five stitch length and an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm using Tech 70 bonded nylon from oh, Sunny's Sewing Machines. And I'm using a Juki DU1181N. And I have a servo motor. I'm just going to trim these threads real close because you can kind of see them um, if you don't trim them real good. So that was one piece. So then we'll take another uh, one and a half inch strip. And then li line up your edges of your uh, folds. And we're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm using a three and a half stitch length. And I do not like to sew past my folded edge to where it wraps around a little bit, you know. So you can clip this. I usually don't. And just kind of pull it along the way, lining it up, readjusting if need be. Making sure that those are still lined up really good. If they're not, go ahead and um, pull up your zipper tape and line them back up before you finish sewing because you want them to be like perfectly matched. So then we're going to fold these two right sides together, or sorry, wrong sides together. So you'll see only the pretty fabric. If you want, instead of using two exterior pieces, you could go ahead and cut one exterior piece and one lining piece, then you can have um, an, an exterior on the top and a lining on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and top stitch this now um, all along the folded edge and the zippered edge. We're going to leave the raw edges alone. We don't need to top stitch those. So I went ahead and switched back to a number five stitch length. I sewed up the one short edge. We're going to come down the long edge. Since I have vinyl, I can't press this, so I just use like a finger press using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And this is what we have so far. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I like to leave my zippers um, attached to each other when doing this 
so I can get that fold lined up just the same way as the other side. I have learned the hard way that you can't line them up just right all the time. If you take them apart or something like that. I'm going to add some clips this time just so it doesn't move around while I'm trying to do the fold. So I've got it all lined up just perfectly. What I do is I can see my fold right here. So I just hold my finger where the fold is and fold it back. That way that fold matches up. Just in case your one side is just a little bit longer than the other side or something of along those lines. Okay, then we're going to uh, base stitch this on. I'm going to keep my stitch length at the number five. Hold that fold down. When I come um, from the uh, opposite direction, I usually have to lift my presser foot up to get over the hump of the zipper teeth. Okay, so again, I'm gonna trim these um, threads pretty close so you can't see them. We're gonna grab our last piece and lay it on the top, making sure the um, folded edges match up. Use a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you turn your stitch length back down. Your fabrics are right sides together and your zipper is sandwiched in between. Not liking this one, so I'm going to move it just a bit. It was like a, a millimeter probably. To line up, I lined it up with this other side here. close again I back stitched at the beginning and ends of these if you've seen previous videos you know I don't back stitch very often um, this one I definitely recommend back stitching on we're gonna do the same thing again we're gonna pull this open Fold it right sides together. <clears throat> they still ended up being a little bit off, which is, that's frustrating, but this isn't the one I'm going to use, so I guess that works out. Turn back up to number five and top stitch around. did not back stitch at the beginning or end on this one because um, we'll sew the end the raw edges onto the bag so they don't really need it anyways here is your finished zipper holder there's no zipper attached on here yet and you're about to see why I'm gonna go ahead and just rip this apart 
We're going to need it for each side of our bag. So I'm going to put those to the side because like I said, I already did my, started this. So I have my um, old zipper already put on here. This one's basted on already. I have not basted the other side on yet. So you just want to make sure that your curved inside is on the same side on both sides. We're just lining it up with the top raw edge, clipping it on there. And then we're just going to baste it on. I, it is centered. You can see that I have some vinyl showing. We're going to end up using a half inch seam allowance to close this bag up. So I'm not worried that my vinyl is a little bit short. Okay, so now I have both sides basted on. If you have a print or something, or you have a front that you would prefer to use, make sure your zipper will open in the correct direction for you. Sorry, this is going to be what it ends up being like. My, go ahead and grab your handle connector piece. Uh, make a mark down the center. And I use double-sided tape. So I have my double-sided tape on there. It's peeled off. I've got a couple three-quarter inch strips of... what is this waterproof canvas that I'm gonna put on the inside of my handles just to make them a little more secure because this is a thinner faux leather which is it's great just needs a little more durability at the handles I think so I'm folding the raw edges up to meet my center line Then I will cut my excess off and we're going to fold this one to the center. If you're using a thicker vinyl for this piece, I might suggest cutting it only to two inches wide instead of four because we're going to be folding this all over onto itself. <clears throat> and um, and closing the raw edges anyways, so you don't necessarily need the four inch wide piece. So then we'll fold this over on top of itself. I like to grab an ex excessive amount of clips and then only use a couple of them. <laughs> okay, so those all our raw edges are enclosed. Again, not necessary to have enclosed raw edges because we're going to fold it um, like basically like this onto itself. So all the raw edges will be enclosed. This is a thinner faux leather, so it's okay to have the extra layers. 
All right, so we're gonna top stitch with a five all the way down and back up. I'm going to use, um, I'm not sure what I was going to say there. I'm not going to ba bother back stitching at the beginning or end because we're going to be cutting this piece down anyway. trim the threads and also cut any excess uh, vinyl off the ends. And then we're going to cut them down to five and a quarter inch pieces. Here's where we're going to thread our rectangle rings on. Then I like to just throw on my rectangle ring, fold it in half, and put a little crimp there. Then that's where I'm going to fold my pieces to meet the center. So this is the back side. You can see where it folded and we're going to repeat that four times I never know which side of my um, fabric I top stitched on because the top stitch in the bottom looks almost identical All right, so all four are done. Man, that silver looks so nice with that. I picked out silver or black nickel and the customer picked the silver, but they both would look so good. The hardware is from moremeknow.com. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our strap pieces. I like to have over the shoulder straps, even for the smaller bags. So I have mine cut to 24 inches. And then this gives me extra room to play with the faux, roll, faux rolled handle. So for this one, I'm going to put the double-sided tape on just like usual. Then I'm going to add three inches 
approximately of the waterproof canvas to the bottom of each side, each raw edge, each short edge of the strap. just to provide extra strength. Again, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch strip just so I have room to fold around my uh, strap piece. Within, without including like any extra bulk or anything. So I'm gonna put it right up next to this double-sided tape. Fold over one long raw edge meeting the line in the center just like we did already for the handle connectors We'll go ahead and top stitch this an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Before I go around that one, I'm going to go ahead and do the other strap. does not matter which side you put that um, piece of waterproof canvas because we're folding it over. So I just always put it on the closest side to me. Um, I use waterproof canvas because that's what I have and it's strong and it's stiff. Uh, you can use craft text. You can use Cordra. You could probably use like another strip of this same vinyl here. You could use uh, Decaville Light. You could even probably get away with just using some Woven Fuse or SF-101. Okay, that's folded. I'm gonna just keep on going.
I'm not a little crazy there. Then just going to flip the whole piece and sew down the other side. gonna clip those jump threads down there and my vinyl is a little off see there so I'm just gonna trim that down so it's flush and even okay so she has us take and put our um, vinyl through our strap through the strap connector and I'm gonna fold it over an inch I'm not gonna do a half inch and then a half inch that's just that's too much for a vinyl strap even a thin vinyl strap So, we're going to, oops, top stitch on here. What did she use? She said she uses a rectangle. I'll just do, like, maybe two lines of stitching. I might even, I think I'm only going to do one, actually. And then I'll use a, a rivet on here, too. For this one um, stitch line, I'm going to turn it down to a four so it's a little bit stronger of a hold. And then I'm going to back stitch all the way back. Then we're going to do this with another one. Make sure your raw edges are both um, both on the back side where, of your connectors. So where you're folding this over, you want them both to be on the side that we folded over earlier. That's like really hard to explain. I don't know. I'm really bad with words, so. My handle connector is coming undone here. Got to reclip that. Sorry. Okay, one inch I fold it over again. And we will top stitch this down close to the rectangle ring. This is what we have so far for our handle and then this is the back side so that handle connectors folded in edges and the raw edges back here are both on the same side and we're gonna go ahead and do it for the second strap Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> I like to count the stitches while I'm stitching forward and then count that many backwards and then that's when I stop. That way I make sure because I only stitch from stitch line to stitch line. You can see that. So usually it's about six stitches on a four and five stitches on a five. And I usually try to start like right in a hole that I already made and then go to a hole on the other side that I already made. Here comes the somewhat tricky part. We're gonna go one inch from the edge of the fold, which is the, should be your raw edge. I wanted to make sure. And then we're gonna pinch it together. just want to warn you that this could very well irritate any arthritis or um, what do I get <clears throat> um, cysts in your wrists or something your fingers could cramp up this does get pretty hard it's not this is actually working out very nicely with this um, Rex leather here or whatever but I have done some and they by the time I get finished with them my hands are cramping I have a cyst in my wrist <clears throat> and that starts coming out I just want it to be be warned it gives a wonderful, wonderful handle. I love using this style of handle. It's thick on your machine. So this little thin vinyl is awesome for this. We're coming to the other edge now and we're just gonna pinch it off right above it. Okay, so the hardest part is getting this your needle through the stitching you've already made and lining it up on the opposite side. I don't think that I have ever successfully hit both sides. So it's one side's gonna be the underside, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. But just throwing it out there, that is like a hard part. So you're gonna turn your handle to the side and we're going to stitch right where we've already stitched. You can sew this with your normal top stitch length if you want. I'm going to use a four just so I'm going to try to fold that out of the way. Um, it's a little bit more secure. <clears throat> so remember, you're trying to sew right on top of your previous stitch line. I'm going to go three stitches. One, two, three-ish. And back stitch, and then go forward again. <clears throat> Try to keep those edges lined up. I 
and I always do one strap at a time. You notice I didn't clip the other one, just so I can give my hands a break. One, two, three. <laughs> Trim those threads. And now that this is finished, I'll punch my hole through. I always wait until after I get done stitching that though, just so I can make sure that I have enough room without scratching up any hardware or anything like that. Okay, one each for me. That's all I can fit, I think. These are nine millimeter uh, rivets. They're from Purse Supplies Are Us. So they have like a little bit longer of a throat, but I also use Lauren's on here with no problem. That's Lauren's, um, laurenmormino.com. I think she was out of silver rivets the last time I was getting rivets, so. I went back to my OG supplier before Lauren started selling him. So I brought you over here so you could see this. Look how sharp that is. Oh, I love it. I'm so obsessed with these. So we'll stitch these on to the bag in just a minute, but we're gonna finish the other one. I will stitch these onto the bag and use uh, two more rivets. So there'll be three per one side of the handle. Let's start on this other side here. I love doing these. Um, I know that there's a actual way to do the rolled handles like with a cord in the inside. I have never done, done them that way. This is the only way I've ever done them. And the vinyl's always so thick and strong I can't imagine trying to put a cord in there too and sewing around it. That sounds like miserable to me. This is actually the only pattern I've ever seen the rolled handle tutorial in it for. Now, I don't own all the patterns out there, so it doesn't mean anything, but this is the one I learned it from. 
I have also put these handles on the Trailblazer tote from Bagstock. And, no wait, not the Trailblazer tote. I did it on the Peekaboo Beauty bag from, from More Me No. And I did it on the Urban tote from Maggie 55. I didn't care for it on the Peekaboo Beauty bag. But on the Urban Toe, it looks so good. So if you have the Urban Toe, I highly suggest trying those handles on there. And if you're in Maggie's, not Maggie's, Sue's group, Maggie55, um, you could search my name and you'll find my, my handles on there. It's with a book fabric. It looks so good. So I've still got a number four stitch length. I backstitched three stitches. We're trying to keep this real nice and folded, lined up. We'll go ahead and get that leather hole punch again. Uh, my leather hole punch is just one from Joanne, I believe. It's got like six different hole sizes on it. I've broke one, two, two of the hole sizes. So I'm using this third size. It's the third biggest one. And it's not Um, too big for my rivets or anything. If I break any this this one, <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a new hole punch. Got a table press. Don't really want to disclose where I got this, um, but I do know that Cam Snaps sells them. Okay. I thought I messed up my strap somehow. I was really confused how. So here is the second strap. So one, two, two pretty rolled handles. Oh, I love them. Okay, we're gonna grab our double-sided tape and our handles. You can use fabric glue here. You can not use glue at all, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm gonna take a one and a half inch piece of double-sided tape. <clears throat> and stick them down the center of the back of the connectors. 
I am going to leave my clips on there. And I'm just putting them like in the center of the width and the height. That way the double-sided tape doesn't stick out um, after you connect it to your bag or anything. Okay, and then we'll grab our bag. What is this, the main panel piece? And... Sorry, I'm just freaking myself out a little bit. I like to do that, keep myself on my toes. Okay, it says two and a half inches over from the edge. This is graded a little bit. Um, you already did that previously. So keep that in mind when you're making When you're figuring out where to place these, I'm going to peel off one side of my double-sided tape and line this up with the folded edge of the top of the zipper or the top of the folded edge of the top of the handle connector going right on top of the zipper teeth. And then we're gonna push that on. So, like this. The folded edge just covers the top of the zipper teeth. We're gonna repeat that three more times. Just double checking to make sure those are actually <laughs> lined up. Okay, and we'll do it again. That's gonna fall off, so. I will just keep going. Two and a half, just over the zipper teeth, and press. With how much you're squishing the fabric, I wouldn't use glue, just because I wouldn't want it seeping out. But to each their own. I'm not a good gluer. Glue usually gets like everywhere, so. All right, one more. And I'm measuring two and a half inches from the very top edge. Like I said, it grades in a little bit.
Okie doke. Let's sew these on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So again, this needs a little extra strength, so I'm gonna still use a number four stitch length. I'm gonna try to top uh, to top stitch these on right over the um, stitching I already did. And you want to start so your needle can be um, so your foot rather can be right in line right up next to that hardware so I always start like in the bottom corner like furthest away from you I guess Um, remember I said earlier too that you could do these um, handle connectors with a two inch wide piece of fabric instead of a four. This is also why it's going to be thick. It's going to be hard to sew through with like a regular domestic machine. We've got a piece of extra fabric here to cover up my hardware and that jump to get over the hardware. That way, hopefully, I don't scratch up my hardware or <clears throat> scratch my fabric and chip off stuff. I'm gonna twist this now. It's gonna be in the way for a second. I'm pretty close to the handle connectors right now, the, the rectangle rings. Sorry, this is just gonna, it's gonna fall over probably. Okay, I'm gonna cover my handle connector back up with my spare fabric. I've got my presser foot lifted up. And I'm gonna go backwards. About, I don't know, three, four stitches probably. Then I'm going to pivot this all the way back around, press her foot up. It will drag on that if you're not careful, and that will be what's going to scratch up your fabric. Okay, we're back to the beginning, so I'm going to go back across and back stitch. Again, I'm going to add two more rivets um, after we get done here. So it'll be pretty strong in there. Ouch. All right. Next one.
don't mind me flipping this the longest way possible around. If you want, when you're going across this part, you could go ahead and back stitch across it too. Okay, we'll go ahead and give that a break for right now and we'll install the rivets. For this one, I am going to measure. I don't know what? Me measure? going to go a half inch up from the bottom folded edge and centered okay and then I'm gonna do a half inch down from the bottom of the rectangle ring. Okay, so that will look like that. You're going to have to like squish up your fabric, which is heartbreaking. I know. I hate doing that. Punch through all those layers. Remember, I have um, waterproof canvas in there as well. So it's a little thick. And now my vinyl's wrinkly right there, but I can press it from the back and those wrinkles will be gone. But it's also gonna wrinkle up when we turn the bag out anyway, so. Just give it some time to relax. It's not a big deal. Okay, so this is a like a thin vinyl, I had said. You can see like how pliable it really is. I layered this with just one layer of Decaville light. Oh my goodness, sorry, those roll handles keep hitting the iPad. So one layer of Decaville light is fused onto this. I'm using waterproof canvas for my lining so I don't need any other interfacing. So I just have interfacing on this main piece here and on the side pieces and I think that's it. Then I added the extra little waterproof canvas strips on the inside here of this handles and the connectors. Okay, 
I always like to put the tops, the posts through the front and the little guys on the back. I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to do it, but it's the way I do it. And then I never really pay attention to which side I'm pressing. I've heard that the tops you're actually supposed to put in the hole of the press. Because if they're in the hole, then they're safe. But I've honestly pressed both ways. And it really, as long as your other side is in the hole, it doesn't make a difference. You should not be denting your things unless you don't have it lined up right. So there is that and the back side. So we're going to go ahead and repeat with the other side. I'm going to do that off camera real quick. Okay, let's grab our bag and our side panels. I've already started clipping mine on and I have a little bit of overhang but it's fine we'll just trim it down no big deal so I, I wanted to see because um, I put on a tag while I was off screen too I wanted to see how far down to put that so I put it it's minus six inches down from the top um, that's where it starts six inches down from the top so, and we're just going to go around the curve here and just keep clipping. Yeah, so I clipped this all on and then took off the clips after I figured out how far down I should put my tag. The tag I have is pretty new. Sorry, this is from that was from my my tags are like burned, I think. And I think some of the times it's got a little black left over. <clears throat> so we're going to top our sorry, stitch this on. I'm going to use a three and a half stitch length and we are going to use a half inch seam allowance. I have one bobbin extra right now for this purple color. And I should be getting pretty close to being out, so I'll have to wind it off screen again. Just go slow around that curve. In theory, you should be able to just... just sew around or right next to your uh, interfacing because it's supposed to only be it's supposed to be a half inch away from the edge sorry it's a Saturday here so all my kids are home my husband's home my dog's home <laughs> It's pretty wild. I am 
when it's two minutes. Libby, please. Oh, oh, did you see that? Oh, I won Bob and Chicken. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so let's do the other side now. Literally just doing the exact same thing, curving it around and whatnot. <clears throat> I did make center marks <clears throat> if you want to do that. For this side, you definitely want to make sure that the zipper um, tails are out of the way. You don't want to sew those. Tuck those inside. Still three and a half inch length and a half inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to trim down these seam allowances to about a quarter of an inch. And just see how like pliable and like thin this vinyl is. I want to make um, the Freddy bag from Maggie55 out of this vinyl once I get this one all done. I've not made it yet, <clears throat> but this Rex is supposed to be excellent for it. And it would be so pretty in this purple color. Okay. So now that that's all trimmed up and we have the bottom of our bag basically made, no basically, definitely, um, I'm going to add some purse heat. I do not have the purse heat out yet because I didn't think about it beforehand, but I'm trying to figure out how to do this so you all can see best. So basically what I'm going to do is try to square off the, the bag a bit here. 
then it's probably five inches wide. So I would say <clears throat> that I need a pen. like an inch and a half down from the rounded edge. And <clears throat> I'm gonna do I'm gonna do an inch and a half in from my stitching. Now I'll just do an inch for my stitching. So an inch and a half down and an inch an inch in from the stitching. That is that. really hard <clears throat> to judge this. So we'll go to the other side and do an inch and a half. And an inch in. see my marks here. Let me grab my purse feet real quick. <clears throat> okay. Also, more me no purse feet. Sometimes I use five. This bag isn't like super long, so I'm only gonna use four. So the bottom shouldn't sink in too far or anything. This is 11 inches wide. <clears throat> My dog's gonna go crazy, hold on. Okay, so then we'll just take a, our seam ripper. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and poke a hole. Not a very big one. You don't want these to slip through or anything. And then put your pe purse feet through. You don't have to have purse feet, but I like to put purse feet on all my purses, backpacks, makeup bags, things like that. I leave them off. If I know it's going to be sat on the ground, I like to try to put something on the bottom so the bottom doesn't get torn up. <clears throat> I've got little washer things. I like to open these up. And you, like for magnets, I try to put the prongs through both of the holes. You can do that for these two. It just looks really weird. Because one, I don't know. It just, it's strange looking. Put your first feet in however you feel like though. I don't know which way works best or anything. Oh, 
Okay, <clears throat> so we're done with the exterior, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this out to prepare for the lining. Plus, I like to look at it already. Here it is so far. It's looking amazing. I love it. But I put it the wrong way. <laughs> I checked like six times to make sure that my zipper was going to open from the right direction. And it's not. Wait. Yes, it will. Ignore me. It's going to open right. Oh, and here's the bottom. Looks like I got those relatively lined up okay. They all hit the ground. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. Anyways, moving on to the lining. So this has like a divider pocket and all sorts of goodies like that. I'm not gonna do the divider pocket, so I've made mine a little bit differently. I went ahead and cut two side panels with the exterior side panel piece instead of the um, side panel piece that's for the lining because I'm not gonna put that accent fabric on or anything like that either. So, we're going to skip to the pocket, the zipper pocket, which is, we'll need our main panel piece, and we will need these rectangles. <clears throat> I wasn't sure which one they were. Oh my gosh. That bag is pretty. Okay. This says a one inch by nine inch box. Which is not possible because I think my piece is only nine inches. It is. Oh, it says from the nine inch. It's a seven inch long box. Okay, that makes way more sense. Okay, we've got four and a half. One, two, three, and a half. Oh yeah, one and four ends. Okay, and then I'm gonna do my box three eighths of an inch wide instead of a half an inch or whatever it says. Yeah, it says a half inch on there. One and a quarter inch from the edge. Okay, one and a quarter inch is down is where we're going to pin this and centered which ends up being one and a quarter inches from each side that's fancy okay I also forgot to grab my zipper for this out which is fine just gotta go get one in just a second here Okay, so I'm gonna go and stitch on here. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna flip 
bit. <clears throat> Okay, then we'll clip the stitching. Sorry, we'll not clip the stitching, we'll clip the thread. And the jump thread. And we're gonna use a seam ripper and rip down the center till you're about a half an inch away from the end. Then I'm going to switch to my scissors and cut towards the stitching, all the way up to the stitching, but not through the stitching. Okay, I've got my iron warming up, but so for now, I'm just going to fold these edges and push my pocket through the hole. Fabric here real quick making sure because I'm using waterproof canvas that I don't actually iron the wrong side because that will melt okay so all nice and pressed okay so you know I usually use double-sided tape on here uh, lately, I've been just laying my zipper on. I'm going to make the zipper stop peek out. And then I'm just going to start sewing. I've got, I can see the opening and the zipper so I can like maneuver it around to get it really centered. I don't know why I started doing it like this. I just did and it worked. And I've had really, really nice zipper installs lately. So I just keep on doing it. Okay, you'll notice right now, I do not have the zipper head through here. So I'm gonna have to move that zipper head through in just a minute before I actually start sewing down the side here. Don't forget to move your zipper into the hole. I leave it down at the end though so I can keep it real nice and straight. And then I like to zip it back up all the way to make sure that the zipper um, 
the zipper fabric, I guess, is lined up where it needs to be to close with no gaps. Should go like a half. Okay, there we go. Just like to close it again to make sure it's all where it's supposed to be again. It's not ready to go there yet. You can just um, do like one stitch over where you started and um, pull the threads to the back so you don't have to back stitch. I like doing that, especially when I use contrasting thread. I didn't this time and I'm already regretting it. <laughs> take the second um, pocket lining piece and put it right sides together. I'm going to put like two clips on. Three clips. I got three clips. Okay, keeping this looking at me, I'm going to flip my lining fabric out of the way. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance and a three to stitch my pocket shut um, across the two short sides and the top of the pocket. Make sure you keep folding your lining out of the way. You don't want to sew that. trim the zipper because it doesn't matter. Oh, let's see what's next. What's next? I think the slip pocket. Yeah. Okay. Which must be these. Yes, they're just very slim. Um, I'm sorry. He's so loud. I'm gonna make a three inch open, mark a three inch opening down here on the bottom. <clears throat> I'm gonna sew around all four sides. Stopping and starting at the marks I made, and I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. That's what she uses too. Okay.
all done with that. I'm going to clip these corners. I've got an automatic shut off on my iron, so I just turn that back on real quick. I think with double sided waterproof canvas here, I should have left my opening a little bit bigger, maybe like four inches. Alright, All right. I just needed some more talking to. I'm going to fold these in, this edge in before I go and press it. spot was naughty and came back out okay so we'll clip that shut that's the bottom we're gonna top stitch across the top And then on the other side, three and a quarter inches from the top is where we're going to put this and that's centered. Three and a quarter inches and centered. We've got 11 and a half inches on the top. This pocket is nine inches. This looks about good right there. I always just hold these down, which is probably not the best way to do it. You could try, um, double-sided tape. You could pin it. I'm going to like find the center of this. Probably should have done this to begin with, but we'll do it now. Make a little indent and keep sewing. Right next to my indent, I'm going to pivot and sew up where my center is. I'm about an eighth of an inch away from the center um, indent thing I made. I'm going to come up to the stitch line, pivot, and then stitch one stitch, and then come back down. Pivot. Right here, I'm going to back stitch once and then go forward. 
That way I have stitching all the way across the bottom and not looking like I skipped a stitch or something. And then we're gonna pivot and sew up. I should have said too, you should make sure that your uh, pockets are facing the top. I did make one and I ended up having to rip it out because I put the pocket opening towards the bottom. That was silly. Okay. Ouch. So now I'm going to take my lining, my side lining pieces. pick them up off the floor okay and we're gonna do the same thing we did on the my chair keeps moving all on its own stay chair on the outside I did not make any center marks this time. Whatever. I'll just trim off any overhang or whatever if I have it. Which on my exterior I had a little bit, so I should probably have a little bit on my lining too. gonna have to readjust so I had way too much overhang on that one side <sighs> this is why you should start in the center and work your way out But it's all right. Just takes a little bit more time, probably. All right, good enough for me. Shout out to Bernie for my awesome clip holder. Okay, so for the lining, I'm gonna start at a half inch. And then I'm going to in increase my seam allowance to about 5 eighths of an inch. Make sure you don't cut your pocket. I'm already at my 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. I use the markings on my screw here on my on my plate to be able to tell how far I'm over. So the center of my screw is like a half inch and then the outside round part of my screw is like five eighths of an inch or three quarters of an inch. Regardless, it's never steered me wrong. I just can't sew anything bigger than that without having some kind of guide. All right, I'm gonna start decreasing back down to my half inch. There we go. That was my thing in there. Okay, 
So now we're going to repeat for the other side. Let's go ahead and try to make this a little bit quicker and actually mark the center this time. And that means then we'll have to mark the center of our side. This bag could be really cool as like a small diaper bag too. And you could put your like elastic pockets on this, this side pocket piece or this side piece here, which would be sweet. Or just as another a bag with some elastic pockets in it. This is a rather a, a smaller bag, so I wouldn't say it'd be a diaper bag for multiple children. So don't take that. Like this is a huge bag. It's pretty. It's pretty small. Eleven inches by nine inches, I think. Good size, just not good for three children or more than that. Okay, those are all on there. I'm going to stick a uh, hang tag inside. I like my hang tags to be on the zipper pocket side. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then we'll stitch around. Half inch, grade, grade it out to five eighths of an inch. This just ensures that my lining is not going to be saggy. I hate when I get a saggy lining. It makes me sad. I know y'all can see the little wrinkles that I'm sewing over, which would, as you may know, probably will give you like a pinched area, but with the lining, it just, it doesn't matter. It's so hidden, you're not going to see it. Okay, and decreasing back down to the half inch. Making sure if you didn't trim your zipper, not to run over your zipper stuff. Okay, we can trim our seam allowances. This time I'll go down to about a quarter or an eighth of an inch. I don't like cutting that other way into a curve. I feel like I might clip, snip part of my side panel if I do that. So I had to switch directions. Okay, so our lining is done. I actually ended up getting a pinch, a really big pinch here, and that's, that's not okay. So I will fix that. A couple little crinkles on the side is one thing, but that was pulling the whole lining inward. 
which will make the lining sit funny, and, and you don't want that. Okay. So I just ripped out the stitches and I'm going to adjust that fabric so it actually sits in there right. Because I trimmed my seam before I realized that pinch was there, got a bit of a, like a clip into that now. So I literally just stitched higher. We're good to go now. Okay, so open your zipper pocket and we're gonna take our bag exterior with the handles down to the side. I like my zipper pocket um, the furthest side away from the front. So we'll stuff this in here. Make sure your zipper tails are tucked down as well. And then we'll start matching the side seams. So I'm gonna match these first two side seams over here. And I never did trim the Hang the excess, um, hang overhang here. There we go. So I'm going to do that real quick. Then okay. we're going to come over to the other side and match those side seams up. I like to push one side seam towards the left and one side seam toward the right so that it's like um, nested. Doesn't matter which one goes which way. Well, it doesn't to me. I just don't like having a big bulk right there. Okay, so those are all matched up. Going to reclip this one. And then I'm just gonna keep clipping around. This one moved again.
Okay, we're almost done. I'm gonna sew from the exterior side of the bag. So the lining is on my flat against the bed of the machine. I've got a stitch length of three and we're gonna do a half inch seam allowance. Thread hanging all over the place. Trim your seam allowances. Just kidding. Trim your thread is what I meant to say. <laughs> I don't know why I said seam allowance. Duke. Ugh. I just took my magnet off with my seam ripper. Snips. Okay. So let's go ahead and trim that uh, piece down that we just stitched. Try to only trim it like in half, so quarter inch, just so you don't get too close to that stitching, and then the stitching ends up showing through or whatever. Okay, I'm going to trim these threads here too. I think that's pretty good. And then we'll turn it out. Okay, almost turned out now. I am like terrified of turning bags out. <laughs> it scares me so much. Especially like all vinyl bags like this. I'm just like, okay, am I gonna tear this? Is the vinyl gonna tear? 
Am I going to scratch it while I'm turning it out and it's going to tear? lining fits in there perfectly. Can't really tell, but it does. Okay, so I like to leave the turn hole for the last. I'm going to fold my recessed zippers down. Slam. And I'm actually going to like clip them down. Again, this will be another thick part when you're stitching these on, or when you're top stitching this. For this one, I think I'm gonna use a quarter of an inch top stitch length, just so I can try to avoid a bit of that bulk. Again, I can't press it because this is all vinyl, but okay. So I'm going to turn up to a five. To start on the back behind one of the strap connectors. Okay. So again, I've got about a quarter of an inch uh, seam. I'm not going to backstitch at the beginning. And I only did not backstitch at the beginning so it would show less like marks stitch marks. Feel free to backstitch at the beginning. Okay, again, make sure those thread, uh, threads, that is not a thread, it is zipper. Make sure the, sure the zipper tails are tucked down out of the way. This is a corner, so it's a little bit harder to get around. So just make sure that it's smoothed out as much as you can. So you don't get any like pinch marks. Check on those zipper tails. lost one of my zipper tails. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I see the same one keeps poking out, but I 
should have checked my bobbin game before I started this. So fingers crossed. Okay. Don't move your bag without putting your zipper or your foot down. This black didn't tuck under all the way over here. back to where we started. Don't move your bag without your presser foot down. I know I literally just said that, but I almost tried. Okay. And back stitch. Quit doing that, scissors. All right, so we can go ahead and pull out the zipper pocket. Fold it under. I think I end up usually doing like a half inch. Just because that's what it does for me. <laughs> so I just usually leave it. We're going to not move anywhere and make a big bird's nest first. That's what we're going to do. Do over. Hopefully my thread didn't break. I'm using a five stitch length. I like using a five, so if I have to go back in for whatever reason, that it rips out pretty easily. I really messed those up catching it on the magnet this last time. I might just throw these away now. Okay, tuck that back in there. I like to take the corners like with my thumb and try to push them down into the, basically towards the bottom of the bag as much as possible. Okay. 
Okay. Then we will grab our zipper pull, which I put mine on this other one so I didn't lose it. And we're going to thread this on. So what I do, do whatever method works for you, but <clears throat> this works for me, easy peasy. So I just hold the two ends together. One side's just a little bit longer than the other. I'll thread the long side on first. And then the short side. And pull it on. If you did not get it straight, just pull it back off and try again. No big deal. <clears throat> Okay, I dropped my end piece. She has you put a square of interfacing in there. Um, I'm not going to do that. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to fold this in half. I don't even know if I want to fold it that much. Nope. Um, where's my double sided tape? Well, that's silly. Okay, I found it. All is well. So I'm going to take the double-sided tape. And it's going to get loud. I've got a vacuum going. Double-sided tape on the two long edges. backing off of both sides. I guess my husband shut it off for me, so thanks. And I'm just going to fold it up that quarter of an inch that we put the double-sided tape on. Then I'll fold this, the short ends. Make sure you keep your tape small so you can't see it sticking out. So like a little short of the sides so you don't see it sticking out afterwards. I think I'm going to fold this under like a half inch. Ouch. On both sides. Got a number five zipper, right? So this worked out really good for me. I don't know how she has you fold this, but this is how I'm folding it. Okay. So I like to just take my purse and like lay it on its side. And then 
I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, a number five stitch length. I'm going to turn the entire bag. Let the bag fall down if you need to. <laughs> I'm going to flip this around. I guess I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance on accident here. And turn again. Back where we began. If you have something fancy like a zipper end or something, feel free to use that. I don't own any zipper ends. So I always use these vinyl tabs, which is fine. This is like how the Annette taught me to do this. So, so there's our vinyl tab. And then for the last part, she has you sew one and an eighth of an inch away from the sides. Like hand stitch it. I do not hand stitch anything. That's a hard no for me. So, I am riveting it. So what we need to do is make a mark one and one eighth inch away from the edge. And I like to put mine just a little bit under the stitching. So we'll go ahead and make that same mark on the other side. Should really invest in a smaller ruler. So I don't have to try to hold a 24 inch ruler up in the sky. Okay, so there's my other one. I told my girl I was done with the rivets, so I had her put them away. But I forgot about this part. So. Okay. All we'll need is two males and two females. Okay, tuck your zipper under. Match those seams again. Right there. And what you could do is just punch through one side like this and then use that hole to know where you're going to punch on the other side. I am usually a rebel. We'll just hold the two sides together. A 
and punch through all four layers. If you do it the way I just did it and punch through all four layers, you do run a risk of not actually having it lined up 100%. Just throwing that out there. Sorry. Okay. And then, um, to get more like her look, you can just kind of push your sides in. I always struggle like getting it to look really good, pushing the sides in really good and even. So I usually just leave my sides pulled out. But you could have it like that. But I'll just leave it like this. is done. This is a really fun pattern so I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.